Good morning, St. Michael. Good morning. Glad to have everyone here for worship this morning. Uh, it's been uh, a crazy week in terms of news and uh, across the nation. Uh, the good news is that uh, I saw today on the news this morning that the first uh, vaccine uh, is leaving the uh, factories and out in trucks and going out to distribution centers. So we're very excited about that. Um, also heard this morning that uh, our daughter Colleen, who is a nurse at a nursing home in Hickory, North Carolina, will be getting the vaccine in January. So they've already, they've already announced some of the places where it's going to go and some of the uh, ways it will be distributed. So um, good news for all of us. Today we will be lighting our Chrismon tree as part of our uh, celebration of Advent as we move through um, the different things that we're doing. Next Sunday, you are invited to bring your baby Jesus from your home nativity scene uh, to uh, be blessed, and we will actually bless the uh, manger uh, next Sunday as well. So um, you notice that it's just Mary and Joseph, the cow and the donkey, they're by themselves. Uh, the shepherds are still in the hills of Bethlehem. And the uh, wise men are way out east, uh, still making their way uh, over to uh, Bethlehem. So you'll notice that uh, things are moving, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, speaking of Bethlehem and the wise men, on the 21st of December, there will be a confluence of Jupiter and Saturn in the sky. It hasn't happened in 800 years, and it won't happen again for many hundreds of years late in, from now. And it is believed that the, the confluence of those two planets was a bright spot in the sky and that that is what the, uh, the wise men were following. So um, kind of exciting on the 21st. I hope we have a clear night so we can watch that. Um, let's see. Our flower calendar for 2021 is in the narthex for those who want to sign up for flowers next year. Um, and also uh, today at 4 o'clock we have Advent evening prayer. We are continuing our series of tidings of comfort and joy, talking about um, angels that have come to help those who have been in distress or those who have had doubts and, and uh, kind of a blue Christmas kind of uh, perspective on that. We will have Bible study on Wednesday morning, so just prepare for that. Christmas Eve worship. We are doing a reservation system for Christmas Eve worship. We have added a service at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And we also have our 7 p.m. service that we normally have. Uh, we are taking reservations, and we will have assigned seating. Um, and we're asking that masks and, and physical distancing be uh, observed. Uh, so please call the church office. Chris is taking names and, and uh, assigning spots. Um, so please do that. Uh, we've also put it on our board outside, because we do have a few folks from the community who join us. If you can remember anybody who you think of who's normally here that isn't sort of a regular attender on Sunday, if you might want to give them a call and let them know what the deal is, that would be great. Um, we are also doing poinsettias. Uh, 1250 is the cost, and we will be decorating the sanctuary for our, uh, for our Christmas Eve service. Let's see. I think that's pretty much everything that I have. Wonderful. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Sabrina, how's Dean doing? Okay. Could he drive before? <laughs> just, just kidding. Okay, he can drive again. Good, good. Well, give him our love. And uh, also, I heard uh, Larry Slice is doing well. Those are our two latest surgeries. Uh, so yeah, we just want to remember all of those us uh, during this time. Uh, let's take a few moments to prepare ourselves silently for worship.
I invite you to stand if you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, who love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. 
Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause the righteousness and praise to bring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Our Chrismon tree is, uh, is not just a Christmas tree, it's a Chrismon tree, which is monograms of Christ. And you'll notice that there are a number of symbols that are ex here, like for instance, we have the crown and the cross, showing that Jesus is the king of the world. We've got uh, the baptismal shell here, which is uh, where we enter into our relationship with Christ. We have Cairo, which is the P, is the, is the, um, is the row and the X is the chi, which is a monogram for Jesus Christ. Uh, chi Rho would be the two, first two letters of, the, of Christ. Um, so we have all these beautiful chrismons, and we want to, uh, we want to bless this tree uh, at this time. Let us pray. God, our creator, we praise you for this chrismon tree, gift of the earth and sign of your evergreen presence. As we illumine this tree, let your blessing come upon us, the tender branch of Jesse, who brings us light and life. May we who stand in its light eagerly welcome the true light that never fades. All glory be yours now and forever. Amen. We will read Psalm 126 responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water course of the Negev, those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of might and majesty, for you promised to make the desert rejoice and blossom, to watch over the strangers and to set the prisoners free. As we light these candles, satisfy our hunger with your good gifts, open our eyes to the great things you have done for us, and fill us with patience until the coming of the Lord Jesus. O ransomed people of the Lord, come. Let us travel on God's holy way and enter into Zion with singing. 
Um, please stand for the question. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? John confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If ever there was a biblical year, this appears to be it. We have been in, in, engrossed in uh, crazy, crazy disputes in our political life. We have been uh, beset upon by a global pandemic. Uh, our economy has been shattered. Um, we have really seen a sort of plague of biblical proportions in, in all dimensions of our life. And so, in some ways, for the very first time, as I read uh, these words from Isaiah, as I looked at the gospel and, and listened to the words of John, I, I really feel as though we might be able to tap into what was really happening for the people of God in both Isaiah's time and also the time of John the Baptist. What we have is a sense of unease and a sense of dis-ease, if you want to say so. We are in the midst of a great struggle. Now, for some of us, this struggle affects us deeply, and for others, we simply have to change our life just a little bit in order for, it to make, uh, in order for us to make it through. But ultimately, what we're looking at is people are struggling. People are suffering physical, emotional, spiritual, or mental, we all have something on our mind that is sort of wearing us down. The words from Isaiah are incredibly comforting. When you think about it, when 
in, in our past have we been able to identify with the kind of world that the people of God found when they came back from Babylon? Where in the world have we had this kind of experience except for this year? When they returned to the, to the land they had been in for centuries before, everything was devastated. The economy was devastated. The buildings were devastated. The people were, were gone and had returned. They were starting from scratch. Starting from scratch. Now, that could be very discouraging. an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to do things differently than they had done before. Isaiah lays out a path for the people of God as they return to their homeland, as they return to build up their people, to build up their cities, to, to build up their economy. Isaiah says that what God wants you to do is not to build the way you were before, but to build in a different way, to, to strive for justice, to strive for, for making sure that everything is, is good for everybody. Isaiah says that what God wants is justice and fairness, and from that comes peace. So as we realize that there are signs of hope in our world today, there's the, the vaccine and there's there's an opportunity for us to, to rebuild our economy and to do things a little differently. In what ways can we, like Isaiah's prophecy, promote a sense of justice, a sense of fairness, a sense that we can do this in a different way and end up with more people coming to that place that we have enjoyed so much? We have John the Baptist, who is out preaching a, a baptism of repentance, a baptism of, of asking for forgiveness, a baptism of doing things differently. And of course, the establishment of the time, the religious leaders of the time go out to find out who John is because he has gathered a crowd. You know, we don't pay attention to people who don't gather a crowd. We, we tend to ignore them and sort of put them aside. But when they gather a crowd, we tend to listen to what they say. And, and the, those who came on behalf of the Pharisees were expecting to find the Messiah. They were expecting to find a challenge to their authority. They were expecting that, uh, that John would be something that John wasn't. You know, throughout the Bible, when God makes God's self known, when, when, when God's presence is, is felt, there, there are two words that generally come to mind. When God encountered Moses, when Jesus talks about himself in parables, the words, I am, come to mind. I am. I am comes out of the burning bush. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. John says to those who ask, who are you? I am not, he says. I am not the Messiah. Those should have been words of comfort to those religious authorities. But then John goes on to say that there is the I am who is coming. There is the one who will challenge your authority. There is the one who will take every stone that you have built and, and bring it down. There's one who will bring peace and justice and righteousness in a way that you cannot even understand, John says. John knows who are, who are asking him these questions. John knows what their agenda is. Their agenda is self-preservation. Their agenda is no change. Their agenda is to keep the status quo. And John says, that will not do. Because the status quo leaves people behind. 
The status quo is where people are hungry and people are, are homeless and, and people are imprisoned. John says that the I am who is God will turn everything upside down and will give us an opportunity to rebuild and to, and to, and to find that place of peace and justice and righteousness that allows for everyone to be lifted up and everyone to be saved. And so we sit here today at the end of this crazy year. I wonder if Queen Elizabeth will call it her honest horribilis like she did the year that her house burned and her children's lives all went to, to heck. We have struggled through a terrible year of, of disease and, and anxiety and economic devastation and, and fights between people. But the God of I am the God of Isaac and Jacob and Abraham and Jesus and John the Baptist says that at every time that there is devastation, God can provide building up. Every place where there is hunger, God can provide food. Every place where there is homelessness, God can provide a place. And God does that through us does that through us, the disciples that have been called by Jesus to be the hands, the feet, the minds, and the mouth of God. And so as we, like the people of Isaiah, and we, like the people of Judea, seek to rebuild our lives, come to God for that sense of joy that we see in Isaiah, that sense of forgiveness that we get from John, May we seek those things as well in our world today. And in that way, we become partners with Jesus like John the Baptist. May we find a path through the wilderness of this year into a blessedness of a time to come when all, all are acknowledged as children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O oh God. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. 
Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O oh God. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Be with President-elect Joe Biden as he prepares the transition. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O oh God. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O oh God. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. We pray especially today for Bill, Gwen, Marcy, John, Mickey, Scott, Sandra, Linda, Larry, Ed, Dean, and Crystal. We pray for those who are in service to our country. We pray for Tyler, Samantha, Grant, Victor, Phil, George, Griffin, Brian, and William. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and perfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We thank you for the gifts and offerings that are given to the ministry and the support of St. Michael Lutheran Church, and we bless you for those we also want to remind you that in the garden after our service, we will have our uh, quiet communion. For those who would like to receive it, the communion uh, pods are on the table in the breezeway. In this Advent time of waiting and watching, the words of the angel Gabriel break into our world. Greetings, the Lord is with you. Do not fear, for nothing will be impossible with God. We respond with Mary to the angel's message. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. We join with Elizabeth to greet the mother of our Lord. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. We echo Mary's song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In this Advent time of waiting and watching, let us pray. Gracious God, you come to us in new and surprising ways. You make the impossible possible. Help us, like Mary, to answer your call, that the light of Christ may spread to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen.
in peace, prepare the way of the Lord.